want to welcome you and thank you for joining us for our very first episode of our Speak Life podcast, Sowing Seeds Today for Tomorrow's Harvest. This has been a huge mission and mantra in my life, and I want to talk about why this is relevant, why we want you to follow us, why we want you to listen, why we want to bring you really good content, you know, month in and month out to give you a picture of why sowing seeds in this life actually matters. Who are we sowing seeds into? What are we sowing seeds for? What is the purpose of a harvest? Um, why is being positive and speaking life, not death, important? And I'm going to take you on a little bit of a journey with me in my life and some things that I've done and some things that I've been through. And I want to talk about, you know, kind of the way I grew up. When I think about my life and I think about some of the things that I've been privy to or seen or watched, my vantage point in life was like make a way out of no way. Like make a way out of no way. Now there's some optimism in that and there's some pessimism in that. I think that although we kept making a way, we being my family, my brothers, my sisters, my mother, me, the idea behind what became negative was really real. Like I'm dealing with really real situations and I have to continuously eat medicine to, for those situations to become remotely positive. So I think over time through my teenage years, and even into my 20s, pessimism definitely got me. I mean, I'm the smart, I'm the smarty art dude who's got smart comments, who's super sarcastic, who's taking jabs to take jabs, who's killing your dream because, hey, why not? It's Tuesday. And not even realizing that that was even like death, like straight up, not even realizing that was death. And then, you know, in the college courses, on campus, you know, being in, in class, just challenging students, maybe to prove how smart I am, maybe to, to prove that I'm smarter than someone else on a particular topic, maybe to just be an antagonizer, maybe just to be a jerk, maybe just to not be, um, just to, just to write, just to create angst. And I think I enjoyed it, if I'm being really honest. <laughs> I actually enjoyed it. But dude, all of that had a shelf life. I was way past the shelf life on that. Um, and I probably didn't know it when I was past the shelf life. Like, how many people did I turn off? How many people never gave me a chance? How many people liked me and then didn't like me? How many, you know what I'm saying? Like, is that what I'm really looking to do with my life? Is that what I was really looking for? Um, you know, you you can see things through the prism in which your viewpoint is looking at, and my viewpoint didn't see the damage. It didn't see the carnage that was happening. My viewpoint only saw what made me feel good. And I remember sitting around, a bunch. I'm now in our 20s, I'm sitting around a bunch of friends, and I'm making super sarcastic comments to this person. And my buddy's like, dude, don't you think they know you're condescending? Like, don't you? I'm like, no, I don't think they know I'm condescending. I'm like, dude, this is how tone deaf I was to the ability to bring death to a situation. And when I think about speak life, there is a scripture in the Bible um, in Proverbs 18.21, that really helped me, but this is like way after I gave my life to Christ, and it says that death and life are in the power of the tongue. Well, that's a lot. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. This thing, the thing that allows us to speak. Okay, cool. What do I do with that? I don't know. The message version says, words kill, words give life. 
Okay. Makes sense. And I say, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. I don't know about that. Actually, I'm 100% sure that's not true. On personal experience alone. And in today's day and age, where feel people, people feeling and their inner feelings and their ability to express their emotions, because we've uncovered a lot with mental health, we've uncovered a lot with um, people being able to express themselves. Social media has uncovered a lot where people can take positions and stances and feel more comfortable doing it because they've had a lot of practice. Words definitely give life or death. So this became paramount for me as I started to age in my career. Um, I've been in sales most of my career. Well, then that means I'm a wordsmith. Well, if I'm a wordsmith, well, then I have the ability to pick and choose my words. So I can pick and choose the words I want when I want to choose them and what I want to use for the most part. Not perfect, but okay. So that's... That's cool. I can pick and choose the words I want. Cool. Well, let's take it a step further. I meet this beautiful woman. Her name's Robin. We start dating. Me and Robin are long distance. She lived in Maryland. I lived in New Jersey. We date long distance for three and a half years. We get married. This is now my beautiful bride. Robin Renee Mead. And in our first year of marriage, we read this book called The Five Love Languages. And The Five Love Languages that I, you know, I've has been well documented for me has, you know, shaped a huge portion of my life. Um, these five love languages are gifts, acts of service, physical touch, words of affirmation and quality time. Well, my wife is words of affirmation. So this is actually really paramount now because we're married. So for me, I'm definitely now being challenged, even in ways that I don't know up until the moment with my sarcasm, with the this, with, with the things that I'm doing. And it starts out as, you need to love me for who I am. You need to accept me for who I am. Yeah, that don't have a long shelf life. When <laughs> the person is affected by words. <laughs> like you're not, you're not escaping that one, buddy. So I had to mature. I had to grow. I had to challenge myself that this isn't going to work long term. This is not a solution. This is not a this is not going to be a good path for us. So I have to decide do I want to do new practices? I was also being challenged in my relationships with friends and I was also being challenged in my work life. So everything's coming to a head where this sarcastic, um, condescending young man is now being challenged. Now, the good news is, is I didn't have to dig deep to actually turn my words. I just had to really practice it. I just had to actually put in the work of years of, of, of doing what I was doing to now try to reverse it and do it differently. The people that are great at something that brings death, are great at the exact same thing, and it can bring life. So I started to, to latch on to this phrase called speak life. I'm probably in my mid to late 20s. I'm realizing that this is something, I'm probably in my late 20s, and I'm realizing this is something that, I, this is a place I have to get to to make it in the next season of life. What is that season? I've had friends all my life. I, I've known them since childhood. Most of them are going to deal with me one way or the other because the friendship's so long. We've been friends so long, you know. I have a lot of brothers and sisters. We've been, you know, 
thick as thieves since childhood. Like, it was time for, in my relationship's life, my uh, professional life, and in my marriage for this thing to change. So I not only adapted to the word speak life, but I also started to bring positive things around me. And there was a time in my life where I was going to church and, you know, I was looking at where I was at, you know, like, you know, and I, and I go on a Saturday night service to, um, to receive the word. My wife stayed home. I went by myself. I just went. I don't think she was maybe not feeling well or something like that. And I go to church. I'm getting ready to leave the service, and the pastor does an altar call. Now, sometimes when the service is about to end, you know when it's about to end, and I'm kind of packing my stuff and looking to get out of there um, just to get back home. And the, the, the pastor does an altar call, brings you know, does a call. I don't remember the specific altar call, but it had my name all over it. Meaning like if you're dealing with such and such, come down to the altar. You don't have to go. If you're looking for deliverance, if you're looking to be healed, or if you're looking to receive revelation or knowledge or something, you're probably going to feel it in that moment at that altar call in some capacity. Could be a level one or a level 10. You never really know. I knew it was an opportunity. Now I am 85% out of the church. Like my foot is very close to the door and I can make this decision to just leave. But something arrests my spirit and pulls me back down to walk all the way down past all the pews to the altar and rest in that moment. And that moment is however long the Holy Spirit and or the pastor want it to be. I don't have any control over that, and I'm here for it. And he starts prophesying. Pastor starts prophesying over people. He grabs one, one young lady, starts prophesying. And he, it's a crowd of 30, 40 people, so it's not like he's going to go and prophesy over 30 people. He's just selecting people out of the crowd. I was the second person he selected. And there's some. this, this, this has been really a major major part of my shift um and this is i'm probably 30 years old this is probably 2011 um and the prophecy sounds like this um god's going to teach you you have a gift you have a gift of words the lord says i've given you a gift where you're able to be articulate where you're able to be precise you have the ability to argue. You have the ability to defend positions that you don't even believe in. And as he's saying this, my eyes are closed, my hands are raised like this, and I'm now laughing because I don't know how he knows that because I've been arguing positions my whole life. I've definitely argued positions that I didn't believe in. And the Lord would say, now I'm going to hone that gift. I'm going to cause that gift not to be used for destruction but to be used for construction. Why is this guy reading my life? Like, how is he doing this? How did he know? I just gave you an entire intro of my ability to tear people down. That's points of my life. And he says that this gift will no longer be used for destruction, but for construction. Your gift of gab shall be now used to build and he said it again, to build and no longer to tear down, to build and no longer to destroy, to build and no longer to pull apart. Like, he's saying this to me. My eyes are closed. And then he says it one more time with the, all authority, to build. And he says, and now I'm going to use you. You shall be known as, as an equipper of people. From this day forward, saith the Lord, you shall build people. You shall look at them and say, how can I pull the best out of them? And this shall begin to work within the context of family, within the context of colleagues, within the context of community. This is my calling to you, my son. You should be known as a builder of people through your words. Receive 
in Jesus' name. If ever something shifted the course of my life, it was this. Now, let's be let's break this down. Prophecy is this man is speaking. What is going through him is the Holy Spirit is giving him this information. Everything that he said, he didn't know. But the Holy Spirit downloaded that information, gave it to him, and it came out in a prophetic calling on my life, which obviously is a pretty serious thing, and it was pinpoint accurate. So I'm already going through this phase of, like, I got to be better with my words. I'm, I, I'm already working on it. This crystallizes it and says, this is your future, my friend. This is your future, my son. This is what is going to go forth. There's no way to dodge that. To have the ability to articulate, to have the ability to be precise is good. It's great when it's in God's hands. To have the ability to construct is good. It's great when it's in God's hands. The calling, the mandate. You should be known as an equipper of people. From this day forward, saith the Lord, you shall build people. You shall look at them and say, how can I pull the best out of them? That's very distinct. There's no mincing of those words. There's no mincing of those actions. So now... Speak life, I was already utilizing that phraseology in my head. It was something that I was using to get better at what was has plagued me or what was a deficiency of mine for too long and proudly, sadly enough. But this crystallized a new day. This said that what I was telling myself and what I needed to do for my relationships for my professional life and for my wife was now no longer a thing that was cool or a thing that was, you know, circumstantial. This was now the new path in the direction in which I was headed. No negotiation. So it doesn't always happen overnight. Sometimes it could, sometimes it takes time. But I had to continue to put into practice and then you don't know how this is going to play out <laughs> like how, how does this work from here right up until that point I had been in the mortgage business in sales as a loan officer really focused on me like me and my clients which it's been documented I was more focused on me it wasn't a business that I, I loved I didn't love the business um Insurance, life ins the life insurance business came to me. It, it, it had the perfect storm of business principles and practices for what I had seen in my life up until that point. And it fit like a glove. I had the ability for sales, where if I sell a policy to a client, the client does well because they have life insurance coverage for their family and their loved ones, which is something they wanted. And I make money. So mutually beneficial. I also could get the clients from leads. I could buy leads and get my clients, which means I didn't have to hit the street and try to farm up clients every single day for the rest of my life. That worked out. So instantly I came in with clients. There was also a recruiting component that had that had allowed me to recruit people from job boards or from my warm market and allow them to also come alongside me and learn how to help people with life insurance and sell life insurance and make money. That was a component that I had in another business without the sales component. The sales component in life insurance allowed me to make money and feed my family. Today, the recruiting side of life insurance allowed me to go out and build a team that could create residuals into the future. But this piece, this team building piece was where this came in the most, this prophecy that was spoken over my life because now I'm dealing with people at ridiculous scale, right? I can't just 
I, it's not just me and my clients. You know, it's not just me and my friends. Now it's me and it's people that are entrusting me with the knowledge, the wisdom, the intellectual capacity and the emotional capacity to help them get through their hurdles in life. This took on a new meaning of leadership for me. Necessary, but probably unexpected or, or, or maybe the timing. I wasn't sure that I, I was going to be able to do it, but I was very up for the task based on what I've been through, based on experiences that I've had up until that point in my life. So now the very thing that has been mandated and crystallized for my life, speak life, is now going to go forth in real practice at real scale, and I have to figure this thing out. So I <laughs> trialed and errored this thing, man, and being becoming an encourager, um, becoming someone that can listen more than I speak, that was challenging. Um, becoming someone that can not be quick to respond every single time. You know, don't cut people off. Man, was this like a like a PhD, an MBA PhD of schooling. Um, it wasn't who I was. It was who I was becoming. It was who I needed to become to get to levels that the Lord had for me. But it was definitely a process because we I sold life insurance at ridiculous scale because I recruited at ridiculous scale. My the amount of people that crossed my face or crossed my phone on a day to day basis was ridiculous. So when I say I had the practice, I created so much activity. It created the practice. The practice was there. And I butchered a lot. So don't get it twisted. I've probably turned some people off, upset some people, made some people, you know, upset. Here's what I know. Whatever mission you're on in life, whatever mandate you've been called to do, wherever you're going, you're never going to be ready to do the thing you need to do. So you're always going to mess up. You need to be able to forgive and forget. You need to be able to apologize, and you need to be able to move on. You're not going to be able to help everyone move on. That's not your job. No matter what you're doing, you're going to mess up when you have a newborn baby for the first time. I'm sorry. There's no, it's the school of hard knocks, baby. There's no book on it. When it's happening, it's happening. You need to move forward. Keep becoming the person you're called to be. Keep becoming the person you're called to be. Don't let distractions, doubt, despair, any of that crap get in the way of your calling. So we just kept moving. Doesn't mean it wasn't without challenge. Doesn't mean it wasn't without, um, a ton of introspection, <laughs> introspective views and thoughts, um, course correct, reading books, listening to podcasts, seeking wise counsel, prayer, all is shaping me into what I'm called to be. And I remember taking my wife's grandmother, we call her Mama, to the airport one the train station to get back down and she came and visited us and I played the prophecy for her the one that I recited to you and she said we were turning the corner I was making a left turn and she she said pause that she and I paused it and she said you see that building right there she said just like an architect knows where to put the columns knows how to build the stairs know how to wrap things around knows where they want the windows, that's you with people. I never had a more clear, that was like the more definitive definition of where I was going. It was funny because I'm not there yet, but these people are breathing life into me. They're speaking life into me. And that was the clearest I've ever seen my calling before it played itself out. She said, you know what to do with them. You know where to align them, where to put them, and how to pull the best out of them. I said, wow. 
Now, again, I, this still hasn't played itself out it's at any real scale. So these are crazy revelations. And, and I think what we're trying to do here is bring people who speak life for a living in their community, in their circumference, in their world, who sow seeds for a living, who reap ridiculous harvests or produce ridiculous harvests in their community, circumference, or world. We want to bring them on as guests here because we want to talk about breathing life into people and how other people can hear someone else's testimony and it could help paint their future. So I'm going to surmise with this, so I'm going to close with this. Not too long ago, I was probably in the last two or three years, I've had probably in the last three years, I've had this revelation of ridiculous generosity. Like this is what you need. This is where you need to go, Mark. Uh, legacy. It's ridiculous service. Paying things forward. Building partnerships that is incredible for both parties, but but incredible for the person that we're partnering with or the group we're partnering with. And just wanting to sow seeds at a ridiculous level. Uh, to me, right now, I still don't know what that means. Just I'm being straight up. I know it's a mandate. I know we're moving in that direction. I know we're having impact, but I, I'm still working through it. And this scripture came across to me. Remember this. Whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will also reap generously. 2 Corinthians 9, 6. When I look at that text and I scroll further down into that text, it says, now he who supplies seed to the sower. <laughs> this took on a whole nother realm for me. I was ready at this point in my life to hear it. I was ready at this point in my life to receive it. I was ready at this point in my life to act on it. And when I realized if you sow sparingly, you get, you reap sparingly. If you sow generously, you reap generosity. But he supplies seed to the sower. He, the Lord, he, he Jesus Christ, who supplies seed to the sower. Well, who's the sower? The sower is whoever is willing to sow generously. Those are the people we want to communicate with and talk to. They're sowing generously in places. Because if the sower is willing to be generous, then he is willing to supply the seed. As long as what I realize in life is you can be close-handed or open-handed. I've struggled with this. I struggled with this. I realize today and in, in, in my short um, recent past that open-handed is a hand of generosity. And I'm watching this guy on YouTube named Mr. Beast who has 160 million followers. But have you, I've never seen generosity like this. N like never. And man, does that, excite me but it's no wonder there's millions of dollars crossing through this man's hands he gives so much of it away but yet he lives with an open hand he's sowing tremendous seed in his circumference his community his world tremendous seed for the record we can ever get Mr. Beast on. We'd love to have you. But man, is he reaping a harvest. And so I take you through this journey of Speak Life, our new podcast, Sowing Seeds Today for Tomorrow's Harvest. And I give you the backdrop from different angles of my life and why we are serious about this 
why we want to put this into the world, why we want to sow these seeds, and why we want to reap this harvest, and why we want to try to equip you with these stories or these real-life actions or this inspiration or this encouragement in your life. I believe we need encouragement. I believe we need to walk and be positive to people. I believe we need to be good listeners. I believe we need to um, wait to speak. I believe we need to help people. I believe that we can have impact. And I believe that if you listen to this podcast and its frequency, you will too enjoy speaking life. You will too enjoy sowing seeds and you will too reap a harvest. I hope this helps. Please listen. Please subscribe. Please download. We love you. We pray to God we bring you 